Konnichiwa Critics Rated TSM Desk and welcome back to Nihongo Kayobi Desk. And today I'm going to be talking about the Reiwa era, or in Japanese this is called Reiwa Jidai. And from my understanding, it means ordinance or peace, and that's going to be the new era that comes into Japan after Emperor Akihito Sama retires next month because he is 85 years old. So basically, I'm just going to go off from what I was explained to. I'm using CNN as well. So I know that cabinet member Yoshi, what's his name? Yoshihide Suga, as CNN tells us, he was the one that announced the new name. And he's the guy that you all see actually holding up the calligraphy if you look up Reiwa era. And basically, um, it's going to happen because, from my, according to my Japanese professor, and I knew this anyway, but Akihito Sama, the current emperor of Japan, who was a part of the Heisei era, he is going to be retiring next month because he is 85. And apparently, that's going to be like Queen Elizabeth, who is just going to keep rocking it out until she dies. So, his son, Naruhito, the oldest son, is going to be taking over. However, because he doesn't have a son, his nephew will take over. His nephew is 12 after he can't because he has a daughter and she's 16. I don't know, according to my professor, Toba Sensei, she said that there's a little rivalry there. I don't know, see why, because at least at now, women cannot become emperor and they probably never will be able to become emperor. Especially considering, what? He talked about Naruhito-san. He is just trash to me. I mean, I don't even want to try to say that he's trash, but the way she described him, he sounded like he was a trash person. Because his wife, he essentially sounded like he forced her to marry her, him. Like, my professor was talking about all how she went to Harvard University. Um, he pursued her and pursued her and pursued her. Like, I want her, I want her, I want her. Called him traffic jams for security issues and whatnot. And not only that, when it comes to her wedding, their weddings and stuff, Japan has to pay for this the same way as England. It's to pay for everybody's weddings. They use their tax money. I think that their tax money would be better suited to go to something else. But ultimately, it is your decision to decide that, oh, you want the emperor and stuff. But yeah. They pay for all, they, their taxes go towards this. And then the person that's gonna be marrying his daughter, my professor didn't tell us her name. And I didn't feel like looking it up. I don't know why. But the daughter, she wants to marry somebody who had money issues. And because he's going to marry her, Japan, he has lots of debts that he's not paying for. Does his people technically pay for them from my understanding? And Japanese public does not want her him marrying Naruhito's daughter because of the fact that he's basically a miser and not only that he's just wasting all the Japanese public money and my professor is still a Japanese citizen she's not a citizen of the United States so she still pays taxes for Japan so that's an issue you know, for the most part the way I personally see it I guess it's exciting you know there's a new era coming no more heisei this is the first time a japanese emperor has ever retired which is also cool well so definitely a current event they already even made an instagram sticker board which is also pretty cool that they have an instagram sticker already made for the new royal era I mean, obviously lots of posts have been put on instagram about this and it is exciting to see a, an emperor retire, especially for me, because since this has never happened before, and considering the fact that, you know, so many other things I guess could have happened instead, it is actually pretty cool. Especially when you consider the fact that, you know, whether or not there's going to actually become a tradition or a little process that emperors go through when they do retire. since. It used to be, oh, we were just emperor until we die, but now maybe they'll have to, like, how exactly does it work? And does, do they still get to live in the imperial palace? I mean, where does the former emperor get to live now? Because that is where he lives. He lives in the imperial palace in Tokyo, 
since Tokyo is the capital and that's where it was moved from Kyoto and if I remember name of the palace is Tokyo so I do I am interested in finding out where he lives where he moves to and what the situation is going to be like with all of this stuff later so yeah that's what I've got for you guys pretty much right now I'm just putting on some sunscreen I always try to put on sunscreen before I leave because I do not want to get sunburnt somehow and I'm going to be wearing some perfume tea streamer I'm actually gonna do a review of this perfume it smells really good but I'm probably gonna start doing these things called random Wednesdays where I just talk about all things not necessarily Korean or Japanese just randomly because I want to talk about it because sometimes things or just random days of the week where I'll just start posting videos sometimes not all the time but just sometimes when important awesome things that i want to talk about come up so that's all i got for you guys today i have to get to school bye critics expect this video to come out at 2 30 like expected